This video is brought to you by patreon.com backslash sip the talent. Join the Patreon for exclusive vids, early release vids, on screen shout outs, access to members only giveaways, and added monthly tally points. Hop on over to patreon.com backslash sip to tally to see which one of the four tiers fits for you. Now let's get started. Welcome back to Sip to Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to take a look at things that came across my desk in the last 24 hours. The obvious thing, what the you know what is quarterbacky. Now I, I missed out on the, when it originally happened, and I tried to do some catch up and follow up and see what went on. And you know I saw the the different tweets and different comments about quarterbacky and the young lady that said it. So I, but I had been searching for a while to get context to see how it was said and whatnot, and and try to give benefit of the doubt. And I finally found like the actual interview and not just the quote. So I'm gonna play that part of the interview and kind of give you my thoughts on it afterwards. Like Lamar Jackson's the most valuable player in the National Football League. No, I don't. This is absurd. I, I, what are you talking about? And you are absurd. Listen, I, this sounds like I don't like Lamar Jackson and that's not what it is at all. I think Lamar Jackson has come out and has become a better quarterback this year. He is doing better than I thought throwing the ball and just you know, being the quarterback, especially after losing his favorite target to uh, Mark Andrews. And I, I see it. I see it. But to me, the MVP is somebody who has been kicking ass and taking names week after week. He had a great game against the 49ers. Great game. The defense, exquisite against the 49ers. But he's also had four games this year without a touchdown pass. What four. Is that? Then what he's is had that? other games where he had one touchdown. Two games, like... He's, he has not been, I, in the words of uh, of Colin Cowhart, stars attract stars. No, I'm just kidding. This is what we do. <laughs> you know, Rich, but I want my quarterbacks to be quarterbacky. And to me, Lamar Jackson is just a great athlete, and he's done a really good job, and he had a great game against the 49ers. Prisoners of the moment, he is not the MVP. Christian McCaffrey is the MVP, and he has been. I've been saying this for weeks. It's not like I just decided after this game. That, that's what happened with Lamar. After this game, he jumped up, but he wasn't even in the conversation. He was like a, an afterthought. It was always like Tua, Doug. Uh, no, it's Christian McCaffrey. And then two, and you know, I'm not a huge fan of Tyreek Hill because of what he does off the field, but you know, it's a separate conversation. He's in the second one. If it's not Christian, it's Tyreek Hill. Those are the two that have stood. Now, the term quarterbacky in that context. I think it means black quarterbacks, honestly. I do. I, I I don't think there's any way to... I don't think she was... I think it's one of them subconscious things that she probably say to herself. And it in the heat of the moment, it came out in... On... I will say on wax, but <laughs> that's what the old school players say, banging on wax. But... It came out in this this podcast when she was asked the question because obviously she wants either Brock Purdy or Chris McCaffrey to win. She don't want Lamar. And like she said, he wasn't in the conversation. False. Now, the name she threw out there, Dak, Tua, um, CMC, Lamar was in that conversation. He he really was. The only thing that I would agree with her on that um, those that last little statements about, I mean, you can look at CMC, I always thought that in the conversation should have been CMC, Tyreek, Dak, and Lamar. That's what I thought should have been in there. But it is what it is. So quarterbacky, that's an undertone comment in my opinion. Um, but, hey, what can we say from certain people that don't really care for what we present? I ain't got but four words for them. FTMF. And it don't mean film, then more film. Second thing for the day. Um, Odell's impact. He won I saw an article that talked about what's Odell's impact on the team and uh, Odell Beckham's in, impact on the team. And a lot of people were complaining early in the season saying he's making too much money, his production is not matching the money he's making, yada yada yada. And 
there's some truth to that. He's making a 15 mil with those incentives that I probably won't get. But like I've been saying from the jump, you sign Odell for this time of the year. And granted, he hadn't had you no know, like outrageous game. He had that 100-yard game since the bye week. But he hasn't had to. Everybody else has been contributing in little chunks, like I originally said from the beginning of the season. Nobody's going to have an extraordinary year except Lamar. I said that from the jump. And that's what's happening because he can sprinkle the ball to Likely. He can sprinkle the ball to Zay. He can uh, – Aguilar's contributing. Odell's contributing. Um, Keaton was contributing before he got hurt. Um, uh, 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 J.K. had the big game before he got hurt. Mark. We have a bunch of decent weapons, and nobody needs to have a great game. Now, down the stretch, maybe it's Sunday, Odell may, may need to show up and be Odell and do what he needs to do. But from the looks of the way the season's been going, he hasn't had to. He only has 34 catches, 532 yards, and three TDs, which is not normal, Odell, but he 30, coming off a bunch of injuries. You brought him in for your leadership down the stretch in big moments to make big plays and to have somebody that's already been there and done it. He was on the biggest stage in football, about to win the MVP until his knee got exposed for not being healthy because it was it – was, already unhealthy the entire time he was playing with the Rams. He just signed the waiver and said, forget it, I'm going to do it. And was on his way to being the MVP before he got hurt. And that's that's you know, that's what that's why you signed Odell for 15 million to have him here down the stretch. And let's close with the injury report. Uh obviously Jay Loma Davis for the Ravens is 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 out. He's been ruled out. We got a bunch of questionable guys. The questionable guys being Zay Flowers, Kyle Hamilton, uh Delshawn Phillips, Brandon Stevens, and Kevin Zeitler. Then we got guys that are on the list but were full participants in practice, so we don't even worry about those guys. As far as the Dolphins on their side, the only person you got labeled out already is Jalen Waddle. Your question, questionable guys are uh, Lester Cotton, Liam Eichenberg, Javon Holland, Xavier Howard. Got a doubtful from Robert Hunt, who's an O-lineman. Austin Jackson, who's questionable. Raheem Mozart is questionable. And Jalen Rams is questionable. Now, that's a lot of old linemen on there on their injury report. That's either questionable or doubtful. So I think that be, be as well for our front front six. I say I ain't gonna say our front seven, our front six to to get in there and wreak some havoc on um <laughs> wreak some havoc <laughs> on, on on two. That was pretty fun. That was pretty good. If I say it myself. But that's all I got for you today. These are the three things that came across my desk in the last twenty four hours that I thought to be newsworthy. So I appreciate you guys for coming out. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Uh, see you guys at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Live stream will be up and popping, getting ready for the Ravens and the Dolphins. So I appreciate if you come through to the watch party and uh, watch the game with us. We can talk some X's and O's and what's going on with our Ravens versus the Miami Dolphins. So I appreciate you guys for coming through. Peace and love.